Hey everyone, Active Learning here. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to discuss transfer learning. So in order to be a great deep learning engineer, you have to understand transfer learning. Transfer learning is one of the most essential subject within deep learning. So let's jump right into our video. So let's first start with what is transfer learning? Well, you might guess from the name that we're transferring something to something else, right? And you'll be right. So essentially, transfer learning allows you to use someone else's model that is already trained and optimized, and you apply that model to your own problem. And this way you can train your model a lot faster and achieve better results, right? So normally how we would approach a problem is that we build our own neural network from scratch and that is acceptable but doing so is extremely tedious and the performance might not be ideal right and what if we can use someone else's model that's already performing well on a topic related to ours and use that model to fit to our own problem and yeah that's what transfer learning is and this can simplify a lot of our problems by reducing the training time, right? And also achieving higher accuracy. And you can actually just download an open source model that someone else has already trained on. And they tuned it and probably optimized it with um, parameters, right? And you can use that as a starting point to train your model on a smaller data set, right? Smaller data set for a given task. So in other words, transfer learning is the transfer of knowledge from a pre-trained network in one domain to your own problem in a different domain. This way you can train your network a lot faster and achieve better results. All right, so this is a quote that I found to be really cool, right? Um, in transfer learning, we first train a base network on a base data set and task. And then we repurpose the learned features or transfer them to a second target network to be trained on a target data set and task. This process would tend to work if the features are general, meaning suitable to both base and target task instead of specific to the base task. So what this basically means is that we first have to train our neural network on a base data set that's generally pretty big, right? Like generally a data set with millions of images, that way it generalizes better on our smaller data set, right? And then, you know, we use some, that model that's trained on the large data set, we use that model to fit to our own problem, right? Okay, and this means that our data set will actually generalize uh, sorry, our model will actually generalize better because since it's trained on the larger data set, it'll be less likely to overfit once we see a smaller data set, right? So that's actually one of the benefits of transfer learning. Okay, and yeah, Jason Yosinski, thank you. This was very helpful. Okay. Now, what problems does transfer learning solve, right? So in the real world, we do not have millions of images that are labeled for us to train on, right? You know, it'll be tedious if we have to label millions of images on our own. And, you know, in general, we probably won't have access to these on our daily basis for our jobs, right? And Transfer learning solves this issue, right? By allowing us to train deep neural networks by using relatively small amount of data in a short training time, right? Short training time to achieve wonderful results. And yeah, as the name suggests, transfer learning is transferring what a neural network has learned from being trained on one data set to another related data set. And the idea is pretty simple, right? Okay. And I pretty much discussed this already, but yeah. Um, transfer learning will first extract large numbers of key features from the large data set, right? A large label data set with millions of data, right? Um, we'll discuss what a large data set is later. 
and that will help us detect different objects right in the case of computer vision and then we use transfer learning to transfer these problems and apply it to our new smaller data set to solve a different problem and features are also called feature maps because in deep learning um, in my previous videos i discussed what feature maps are in my convolutional neural network video so if you haven't checked that out already feel free to check it out to understand this video better um yeah so let's see and let's dive deeper into the problems of building neural networks from scratch right so the first problem we may have is data right we do not have millions of labeled data for a model to train on we talked about this and neural networks from scratch require a lot of data to be accurate right neural networks in general require a lot of labeled data to be accurate right so that's a big issue and second issue is computational complexity even if you do acquire millions of images Training on those images from scratch would take you weeks. Training on multiple GPUs if you start from scratch. And also training deep learning models is an iterative process, right? You have to adjust the hyperparameters as you go in order to improve your model's performance, right? So imagine we have to do this, right? This would take us months, years. So it's not ideal to build our neural network from scratch right especially with high accuracy right so and now the problem is how are models even train on millions of data to begin with right how are the models that we're transferring to our uh, model how, how are they trained right now so there are actually a few public data sets large data sets such as ImageNet, MS Coco, and Open Images, right? These are very well known. ImageNet is very well known. Many state-of-the-art uh, deep learning models, deep learning architectures are actually built on ImageNet. And yeah, so the probably the best deep learning architectures are trained on these data sets, and they offer really high results considering. Uh, the thousands of things that they're classifying, meaning that you don't actually have to train your own mo own model on these images since they already offer really high accuracy, right? So now let's go on to a example of how um, how transfer learning actually works, right? So say that we're classifying cats and dogs. So how will we approach this problem using transfer learning? Well, we could uh, theoretically label millions of images on our own, but we can also just simply find a large data set that relates to our problem, right? Now, in this case, let's just use ImageNet because ImageNet has a lot, a lot of images on cats and dogs. It has a lot of images on everything, in fact. So ImageNet is super, super cool. Okay. Now, the second step is to find a neural network that has been trained on ImageNet and offers good results, right? Um, you can first look at the popular uh, deep learning architectures, for example, uh, VGG, ResNet, um, InceptionNet, all that, right? So you can look into that. And in this case, we're going to look at VGG16 for our problem. And so this, the third step will be to download the um, model, right? And download it with pre-trained weights. And then you're, you'll remove the classification part. Like we'll use our own classifier in order to classify cats and dogs, right? Because ImageNet is trained to classify, I think, a thousand different things. So that's why we have to remove that um, classifier part and then use our own classifier part right so we can actually easily download this model um, you can go to tensor hub um, you can go to tensor hub and then just copy the url and then just it, it um, you can find tutorials online how to do so but in my next video i will actually show you how to code this uh, step by step so 
yeah that, that, that I will do that in my next video okay yeah so this is sim basically the basics of transfer learning now let's talk about performance right so transfer learning actually offers better performance right so this is uh, without transfer learning we are starting from zero right because our model hasn't been trained on anything however with transfer learning we actually have a, a basic start right we have a higher y-intercept because uh, the model that we're using already trained on lots of lots of data so we actually have a head start and you see how the, sto the slope is steeper this means that our performance is increasing a lot faster right a lot higher asymptote as well right this means our performance is generally better okay so this is why we might want to use transfer learning because it can offer us faster training time better performance and it's actually very very fast and easy to train using transfer learning um yeah i i will show you how to do so in the next video so don't worry about it if you don't really understand how to code it at this moment and yeah that's it for this video uh thank you guys for watching see you next time